So, it's pretty clear from the scriptures that humility is today's theme. And Father Robert Byron describes it like this. He says, pride is when the ego is center stage. Me, myself, and I. Humility is when the ego is pushed aside and God becomes the center of our life. Once that happens, then we become instruments and God works in us and through us. And I think the best example of that is the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother, when she was able to say, God who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. All the glory, all the credit goes to God. She just cooperates and he works in Mary and through him, giving us the Savior of the world. In this gospel about inviting the poor and the crippled and the lame to dinner, when I was first ordained, a woman in her 60s of very modest means, every Christmas she would go around her neighborhood, she lived in the inner city, and invite between 12 and 15 people, both men and women, to Christmas dinner. And she would spend three months preparing for this event. And then once they gathered in her home, in her apartment, for each one she had a beautiful gift, beautifully wrapped. And she would, she would invite me to say the grace and to be at table, but to see humility at work in this woman, to see how God was working in her and through her. And I must say that it humbled me to be at that table. It humbled me to be in her presence and the presence of her neighbor. Well, I have to tell you this morning that I am humbled to be in your presence. I really am. Uh, last week, Jay Meehan got up here, and he spoke for a few minutes about Father John in Ghana, Africa, and how his parishioners in the outskirts who walk miles to go to church, who make $8 a week for income, they had made the brick for their new church, and they built the walls, but they had no roof. And he appealed. He appealed for a roof for Father John's fourth church. And he was hoping to get $6,000. The, the cost was 12000 He figured if he just get half of it. Well, do you know how much you people gave or how much God gave through you last weekend? The bulletin says 13000 but it's still coming in. I'm guessing it's over $15,000. And, uh, yeah. That's, 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 that's humility. God who is mighty has done great things for us. That's humility. God working in us and through us. So last Wednesday... They called Ghana, they called Father John and said, put the roof on. And, you know, they can't repay us in kind, but they can pray for us. And that's what they're going to do. These people in St. Joseph's Church in Ghana are going to pray for us here at St. Catherine Drexel. And the only thing I've asked is that once it's finished, if they can send us a picture of the church with the roof on it so we can see what, what this new church looks like. Is Jamie in here? That's the last time he's speaking here. Okay? My goodness, that's, we've never had a response like that. That is absolutely, absolutely marvelous. So I am humbled, I am humbled to be uh, in your presence and to be your priest. 
I've invited a very good friend of mine from Dover. I spent ten wonderful years in the city of Dover before I came here. And last night, Joe and Kate Colbert uh, stayed with me at the rectory, and Kate cooked chicken cordon bleu. That's what I had last night. But Joe, Joe, I want him, I've invited him to speak at all the masses about something that we believe can change the church, can change the parish, can change people. So, Joe, where are you? Joe, come on up. This is Joe Covert. Welcome, my friend. Okay, this is your fourth appeal here now. This is the fourth, fourth talk. Good morning. I'm not going to ask for any money, so. <laughs> Although, maybe I should. Um, thank you, Father Paul, for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here today to be able to speak to you about something that's um, very near and dear to me and to my wife, the Curcio movement. Um, let me just ask for a show of hands in the congregation, how many people here today have heard about Curcio? Wow. Were you here yesterday? <laughs> That's great. How many people in the congregation today have made a Curcio weekend? Terrific. We need you. That's great. As Father said, I'm Joe Covert. My beautiful wife Kate and I live in Dover, and we worship at the Parish of the Assumption. We've been married for 34 years, and God has blessed us with two beautiful young sons, both of whom have just graduated from college and moved out into uh, their new lives, independent lives, away from mom and dad. Uh, so we're all adjusting to the change that's taken place. I'm really pleased to be here and talk about Curcio. The word Curcio is Spanish, and it means short course. The Curcio movement is a lay Catholic movement that originated in Spain on the island of Majorca in the 1940s during World War II. And it first came to the United States in the 1950s. It was a time after the Spanish Civil War and there was a lot of disunion in the church in Spain and it was hoped that if this movement could be developed, it would help to bring men back to church after the war. Those who first developed the Curcio worked together as a team from the very beginning. As leaders, they prayed together, they shared their Catholic lives together, studied, planned, and acted together. And they set themselves about the task of forming Christian life among the young people of Majorca, and the Curcio movement was born. Initially, the movement lagged. It was not successful. It wasn't working the way they had hoped and as they had envisioned. And they were discouraged, but they kept at it. They kept praying for the Holy Spirit to intervene. And they, through their hard work, their prayer, and their study, the Curcio movement that we know today was formed. Today, Curcio is in over 900 dioceses in 45 countries on five continents. So why am I here to talk about it? Well, Father Cole asked me, and I love this man. I would do anything for him. He asked me, I'm coming. I grew up in a very traditional, loving Catholic family in Buffalo, New York. I was the youngest of four children, and my mom and dad were very involved in our parish life, and my brothers and sister and I were also very involved. We did all the ministries that we could do as children, and we were very engaged in the parish community. After I married, my wife and I left Buffalo, and we've lived in six different communities in our 34 years of marriage. In each place we've been, we've immediately joined the church, gotten involved in the community, and been Catholic. Until I made my Curcio, 
which I did in 1988, 25 years ago, my Catholic faith was more about what I did than who I was. I always felt like I was Catholic because that's what my parents said I was. It was something that we did. We went to Mass every week. We went to confession regularly. We participated in the sacraments. That's what we did. But it really wasn't about who I was. When I made my Crucio in 1988, that all changed. I made it here in New Hampshire, in Manchester, at the Sardo Center, which is a diocesan retreat center. Crucio is a three-day short course workshop designed for Catholics who have a desire to renew their faith, to develop a deeper understanding of their relationship with Christ, and to grow in their Catholic community. It's a laity-led workshop that's organized around a series of 15 talks that are given both by lay people and clergy who serve on team for the weekend. Along with the talks, there are many opportunities to worship, to enjoy music, to make new friends, celebrate Eucharist every day, and to experience fellowship in a group setting. It's also a lot of fun. The major emphasis of the weekend is to ask participants to take what they have learned into the world on their fourth day which is the rest of our lives. Christio ignites a desire to grow closer to Christ and to learn more about your faith, to study it, and to live your Catholic faith in Christian action in the way in which you conduct yourself day to day in your life and in your interactions with everyone that you come into contact with. My wife and I made Crucio in 1988, and I can honestly state that it changed my life. Over the 25 years that have passed since I made Crucio, I have continued to grow in my faith, my relationship with my family, my friends, and most importantly, in my relationship with Jesus Christ. I can truthfully say that who I am today as a Catholic husband and a father, I owe mostly because of the experience I had on my Christian weekend. If you are seeking a spiritual renewal, whether you're married or single, you're over the age of 18, and you desire to grow in your relationship with Christ, Christian is a good way to do that. Here in New Hampshire, there are four weekends a year, two in the fall and two in the spring. The way it works is men go first. The men's weekend that's next scheduled is October 3rd through the 6th. And then a month later, there's a women's crucial, which will take place on November 14th to the 17th. Let me ask again for everyone who has made crucial to raise their hand. If anyone thinks they have an interest and they want to know what that experience was like, ask somebody who's made the weekend, and I'm sure they'd be more than willing to share with you how the experience affected them. Thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you. After the Mass, I'll be outside with some information that's a little more informative about Perseo, and I'll have applications, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of this beautiful weekend. No, sir, thank you. Right. 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 Now, so, and Joe also plays golf. He has everything going for him. Uh, but uh, really, we have, we've had parishioners already registered, sign up for Casio, so it will grow. It really will grow, and we would love to have Casio very active here at St. Catherine's Rex. Please stand now.